So, welcome to Yumiko, Japan. As you can see, the weather of a few days ago has passed, and the rainy season has not finished as yet. There's still probably another week or ten days, something like that, um, of wet weather on and off. After that, the proper summer starts. So August, really September, and first half of October is the timing where everything really happens in the map pond. As you can see, the pond is looking pretty good. We've got the water level now is running at the normal height that it should be. The other day with that heavy rainfall, the pond was running about 25 centimeters higher they're about 20-25 centimetres. I'll show you in a minute where the level is now compared to where it was on Sunday. Um, but yeah, this is the normal level and water colour is a little bit discoloured still. I mean, of course, it's always going to be like a kind of a green sort of hue to it. Not like a, an algae green, but nonetheless, it's kind of usually got some kind of green colour to it. Uh, but at the moment there is still some kind of like hazy, foggy, grey colour mixed in with it um, from the water coming in to the mud pond during that heavy rainfall. And that will basically um, settle back out again through the next few days. So the water colour is going to change a little bit in a few days when the rain passes or the weather continues like it is today anyway. Um, that will change and I would say improve it's not like it's actually a bad thing at the moment it will just change um, so at the moment I'm still coming here every day because of this weather being so volatile it's really important for me to firstly see the condition of the fish on a daily basis um, because we're still kind of relatively early days with the fish being in the mud pond anyway so it is important to check the fish really regularly but also this weather being so changeable can have quite a big impact on the fish you might end up with um, the water condition being no good parasite problems starting anything can really happen so it's important really to see the fish on a day-to-day -day basis whilst the conditions are continually changing because at the end of the day the most important thing really is that if the condition goes off you really need to be able to stop feeding that's the most important thing or possibly look at using medicated food depending on what the problem is so um, it is important um, it is rare to be in a situation where you would need to drastically address something but nonetheless better to see something early than to maybe come here every once every two or three days um, and perhaps miss the timing for spotting some early signs of a problem. So as you can see here, this is like the spate overflow. The running level is kind of controlled by this, um, although Muraoka-san Mura actually controls the pond's running level daily by using the drains on the steps. So the water level actually usually is not actually passing over this weir. It's usually maybe a 2 or 3 cm below the weir. Um, but it's, you can see pipes that I put in last year on that like overflow. So these transverse pipes um, I put in there last year because of my concerns about Tosai possibly escaping. So that was in there for the purpose if the water came too high to prevent the risk of fish getting washed away. And um, actually, this is the first time I've actually seen those pipes being necessary. But in all fairness, even though those pipes may be necessary, the reality is that the fish, if they sense that water rushing away from the pond, they will become nervous by it and they will swim away from it. So it's not really a huge issue, but nonetheless, uh, risk is risk. And it's better to just avoid it. Hence the reason for putting those pipes in. Now, once everything's settled down and the proper summer is really well underway, um, so when that happens, when I feel more comfortable with what the weather's going on, um, or what the weather's behaving like, should I say, 
once that happens I will drop the visits back to be in three times a week um, which is what I did all the way through last year three times a week is still a lot what most people usually do with mud ponds is to a breeder will usually get someone like Muroka san like we have here to deal with filling the feeders up um, that is normal so what a breeder would normally do is basically deliver food to that person and then that person will basically keep the feeding machines filled up for me I kind of feel like it's really really important to get the best result as possible um, and really important not to make any mistakes so for me I just want to come here personally and do it maybe in the future um, things will be different there will be several mud ponds I'll be too busy perhaps and maybe I'll be dropping back to come in once a week and then maybe Miroka san will be taking care of filling the feeders up um, but for the time being whilst I've got time I want to be seeing all of this in person to me it's um, to not do that to not do it all in person and have something go wrong effectively would result in people losing faith in what I'm doing and consequently would see a downturn in people's enthusiasm and excitement towards supporting the events that we're doing with this what I want to be able to do in the future as well is not only just to have our mud pond challenge event but what I also want to do once we've started using the mud pond above here uh, there's a third mud pond that we want to use from the year after what I want to be able to do is to raise fish in this challenge event as it were and then basically be able to offer people the option of subsequent keeping in Japan through until Sanzai, Yonsai, that kind of thing because some of these fish I think in reality um, are really worth actually leaving here long term um, and that will kind of prove itself really when the fish are knee side but at the end of the day leaving fish here long term we just don't really have enough space for it so for the time being we will do the event in this fashion and in the future once we've got more concrete ponds more mud pond space the possibilities will become a lot more interesting I think so the feeding's finished and it's now um, 7.20 in the morning the feeding I came here to watch was the 6am feeding um, which you would have seen at the beginning of this movie and as you can see now the fish have dispersed from that feeding area they've given up hope of any more pellets coming out of that machine so they're off now swimming around in the mud pond doing what they do next feed is going to be 9am and after that 12 o'clock 3pm 6pm so that's the feed-in regime for this pond on a daily basis and um, at the moment yesterday I increased the feed-in so we're now at one minute of food going in per day and I hope to in the next week or so to get up to sort of a minute 20 something like that and by the end of the month up to about a minute and a half so um, that should work quite well I think of course it's important to judge body weight and condition of the fish as well um, at the moment the fish are putting on weight so I think things are running very well um, but of course they will put on weight they will grow as well and the the trick really is to see the extra growth and correctly anticipate how much food to give them so rather than just simply calculating body weight and calculating how much to actually feed the trick or skill if you like really is in increasing that feed rate as a fish grow and need more food and getting that right because if you get it wrong um, if you don't increase it properly you end up with fish that basically end up long and skinny or maybe just don't grow enough and if you the other way you can get it wrong is basically overfeed and then you end up with fish that are too fat the other thing that can happen um, which is worst case scenario is if you do overfeed is you can end up with the 
decaying food mountain on the bottom of the mud pond and that is the worst case because when that happens basically you can potentially be ending up writing off a whole summer um, of growth you can end up with fish that just don't do well don't eat and the whole reason when you find out is harvest time you pull everything up drain the pond down and you find the food mountain and then that suddenly explains why you had a bad year This feeding hoop, um, because of the water level being higher, um, has drifted off. And yesterday I made some tweaks that I thought was going to keep it more back in place. But yesterday the water level was still high. Those tweaks haven't really worked. Last year it worked perfectly. But anyway, I need to get some more cables. And I will do it in a way now that it cannot possibly drift off and do its own thing. So um, that will be a job now for tomorrow. Now, people think that um, water for koi is just water and water is unimportant. Now, this mud pond, the water in this mud pond is really, really soft. And if you compare this to a koi hobbyist, there's never going to be a koi hobbyist with a concrete filtered pond with water as soft as this pond has got and by mud pond standards for western japan this pond is very very soft but if you compare this mud pond to niigata niigata water in the mud pond is much much softer and um, so when you consider this as an environment for koi this is what koi are raised in, this is what koi are kind of genetically adapted to for generation after generation. And I think this is kind of food for thought when you've got people out there that maybe think that water for koi isn't really so important. Water is just water. Water is not just water. And um, so yeah, this water is soft. And our fish house water is also soft, but it's completely incomparable with this. But as I say, Niigata water is much, much softer. <laughs>